welcome again guys we are talking about rna interference biology and we have already talked about two important videos one is the introductory video about what is rna interference and the second video about the mechanism of mirna or micro rna activity and here is the board which suggests us the process of micro rna activity and there are some other processes if you followed my earlier video about micro rna which i have deleted and this huge part i haven't deleted because this is the part which is common for micro rna processing sh rna processing and si rna processing it's kind of common the only thing differing from the micro rna processing with the sh rna or si rna processing is that the structure of micro rna and second thing is the activity of drosha inside the nucleus that thing is only escaped and after everything is there the process is similar right so let's talk about the sh rna activity now this sh rna mi rna si rna they all are double stranded rna and the activity procedure the mechanism is almost kind of similar with each other right with certain differences very minor differences now in the sh rna we are seeing here they are having a specific structure the structure is completely resembling the structure of si rna except from they have hairpin hairpin remember in case of uh, mirna we have seen the structure of stem loop right i have mentioned it quite the hairpin or something we can see hairpin we can see stem loop structure there in the micro rna processing now in case of sh rna we have a hairpin structure so that's why the term came in it is called as short hairpin rna right so short hairpin structure of double stranded rna it also consists of 20 to 25 nucleotides long now this short hairpin uh, rnas can be produced from a linear RNA because you know this is no longer dissociated from each other those are not two strands hairpin between RNA usually formed by the RNA self complementarity that means the RNA single strand they have some complementary bases somewhere here and here so they will fold back and pair with each other that thing happens and it will form short hairpin so if we see here we have single stranded RNA with sequence complementarity self complementarity nature as a result it will fold back and can create the short hairpin rna right and this is the endogenous process of producing short hairpin double stranded rna inside the cell we can also get it inside the cell by putting it from outside by a process called you know artificial uh, you know injection we can add it or sometimes via virus because you know viruses can have double stranded rna so they can also have this double stranded hairpin stem loop structure containing rna and if the virus attacks the individual for example virus attack plants and those plants can get this short hairpin rna from viruses and they have the process of rna interference using that short hairpin rna against viruses to get rid of the viral infection so if we look at here rna polymerase 2 usually produces the single stranded rna which is can be folded and which after the folding we get short hairpin rna there so double stranded rna is the core and we have double stranded rna in our hand so once we have this double stranded rna in our hand what it can be it can be processed to produce what is called as this i should remove this name it is called sh rna the processed sh rna this is the actual processed sh rna or rna i can be produced only after the processing enzyme activity and the processing enzyme is dicer remember so we have the double stranded hairpin rna as short hairpin rna and that thing is now transported from the nucleus so this is the nucleus guys this is the nucleus and this is cytoplasm right so what we get now we get this rna here so that rna let's say we bring it here it will look something like this it can have some uh, some region of uh, you know 
blank regions or not best pairing regions but it's fine but then so this is the hairpin now this hairpin double stranded rna can be converted into the short hairpin rnai by the processing of the enzyme called dicer so dicer is an enzyme with rna's 3 enzyme activity now rna's 3 is double stranded rna specific endonuclease that means it will specifically scan and recognize double stranded rna and then it will break down both the rna strand to produce double stranded short rna segment and that's what is going on from this hairpin this dicer will bind and it will cleave it it will cleave from the region so once it is cleaving what it will produce now it will produce this overhang two two overhangs are produced at the three prime location right sorry i actually made a mistake there that mistake actually continues because the overhang will be at the three prime terminal the overhang should be at the three prime terminal so they produce two three prime overhangs and they also produce a five prime monophosphate region okay so they produce that so after the cleavage of dicer in the shrna hairpin they produce this three prime as well as the 5 prime monophosphate region so once it is produced and you can also see some amount of this hairpin section is also removed outside because you know during this process let's say some amount of hairpin is also removed outside some some segment of rna is removed outside now after this removal we get 20 to 15 to 20 nucleotide long shrnai now this is the rna interference compound we require for the rna interference process right so once we have this compound in our hand this compound now is ready to be loaded onto the actual rna silencing complex that is called as risk rna interference silencing complex so it is actually made up with two or three enzymes new carrier enzyme number is more in prokaryotes less but majorly they have the enzyme called argonaut so argonaut with another enzyme called slicer you know slicer is also rna's 3 type of enzyme argonaut is also rna's but it is rna's h type of enzyme so argonaut slicer they form risk and this risk will now associate with this double strand overhang containing rna so once they are attached with each other then the process is to unwinding the rna and argonaut will hold on to one strand that is called as the guide strand and it will release another strand that is called as the passenger strand so passenger strand is released guide strand is bound with argonaut remember guide strand is bound with argonaut with a specific domain of argonaut protein which is called as pas right and the other domain which is necessary for the rna mediated cleavage or targeted breakdown of the mrna is termed as the domain pv so everything is there so then argonaut along with this rna's h domain and uh, the our our rna which is the sh rna here so let me write this is the sh rna it will be attached and then this sh rna as it is a very short segment like 15 nucleotide long or 20 nucleotides long it will go and it will bind with its target and this target binding is very very specific so they will specifically choose the target and they will bind with the target after this binding is done then they will encounter a conformational change in the structure of this risk factor that is this argonaut protein so as a conformational change after the conformational change that argonaut protein the pass the pv domain of the argonaut protein the rna's age activity of the argonaut protein will enhance and it will break down the target mrna but not the sh rna remember that's the activity of rna's age rna's age detects double strand but cleave only one rna strand so here it will cleave that rna's target rna strand after the cleavage this is the target rna strand after the cleavage and rest of the sh rna segment is released outside right the fate of this targeted rna cleaved strand 
can they can form they can be degraded inside the cell or they can be taken to produce more type of double stranded RNA interference uh, factors for the future uh, work right so this is in a whole about the shRNA a short hairpin RNA the process of short hairpin RNA and the short interference RNA which is termed as SI RNA is also the same. So if you understand SHRNA process in detail, rest of the process of SI RNA is also similar. Instead, they have a linear structure. In SI RNA, they don't have this hairpin. Rest of the process is kind of same. That's why I keep all these things intact because that is the whole process of RNA interference inside the cell and it is very very important because inside the plant cell what the virus attack the plants so viruses have those type of hairpin double stranded RNA so plant uses their double stranded RNA process their their risk factors argonaut protein to mediate the viral double stranded RNA to break itself down and that's how the whole process works and I hope that's helpful thank you